Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video here today. In today's video, I'll be showing you all about Yeet File, which is actually kind of pretty pretty fun to say honestly. Um, but Yeet File is essentially a pro uh, a software that you can self-host yourself, and you can either upload text, upload files, um, and essentially get a link that you can send to someone else to be able to access this. Um, it also includes um, cool features like number of times that the link can be clicked or downloaded in this case, how long it is before it expires, and if you want to password protect it as well. So you can easily send files and make sure that it is secure so that you know someone else doesn't randomly find the link and then get whatever. So like, for example, you could like put in a password. So like a password in here, right? Um, you can say, hey, it, one download, it expires the 60 minutes, so they need to like essentially grab it in 60 minutes and you need to know what the password is, which I'll just put in password, but you can give them like a random string of characters and then you can hit upload here and it will essentially give you a link that looks like this. And then from here, what you can do, and I'll open this in incognito. Well, I didn't open it in incognito, but you can see it actually goes to this link and it will tell me, hey, I need to enter the password to be able to access those links. So it was password. So type in password, hit submit. And then we can see that this is just a text only, but if this was a file, you could download the file as well. It's 36 bytes and it expires in 59 minutes and 30 seconds with one download remaining. So we can show the text, which I typed in as password. So and you can see now downloads remaining is zero. So if I were to reload this, it will essentially give me an error 400 file has expired because it doesn't exist anymore. So that's a pretty neat way to essentially be able to send your files or a specific text to someone um, and make sure that you know they're the ones that actually get it. So now if you're looking on how to self-host this, what you can do is spin up a server, in which case I have, have Docker and, and Docker Compose installed. And then from there, you can go to their GitHub. So if you go to, if you look up Yeet file on GitHub, and I'll include this link in my description below, you can see that they have a Docker Compose file, which we'll be using, where they have pretty much default values, but you could set certain values if you decide you wanted to. So what we'll do here is actually copy, copy this um, Docker Compose. And on my server, we'll create a Docker Compose file. That is essentially what that is. We'll paste it in here. And there isn't anything that you need to specifically change in here. All the defaults should work, um, but I would, you know, probably recommend changing if you're doing this in like in production environments, change like your actual like Postgres passwords and other things so they aren't default passwords, right? Those are the easiest things to hack. But since I'm doing this for a video and showing you guys, I will just leave everything as um, is right now. And then what we can do is a Docker Compose up hyphen D for detached mode. Um, and then if we look at the Docker Compose file while that is running, it exposes on port 8090. So we can use 8090 to essentially get to that um, server once it is ready. So you can see everything's created, things are getting healthy. And we can go to HTTP um, yeet file 2.dragon.local. 8090 and you can see we have the page set up now if you really want to be fancy you can set up nginx which i have nginx set up to forward to this so essentially um you can actually do yeet file 2.dragon.local on https and you can see that this is all secure if you're interested in all how that works with my step ca and all that um, feel free to check my check out my automation playlist series as well as a few of my home lab series videos on how to get that all configured so but that's essentially how you can set it up pretty quick and simple, especially when you have all the stuff ready. All you need is just the Docker Compose and let it run. So, um, but that's pretty much it for this video. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, feel free to leave me a like, comment, or subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.